Welcome back to my channel and episode three of Knit and Spin with Brie. I am Brie. I am the maker and dyer behind Doodlebug Yarns and knitting is my second language. So I'm just gonna jump right in to my finished objects. I don't have many but I did get a lot of spinning done uh, this past week. So in my first episode, not that anyone could hear because it was mumbly and blah, but um, I was spinning some hand dyed BFL uh, mixed gray that I got from um, Paradise Fibers subscription box uh, a few months ago. And I finished it and I think that it turned out really nice. It's really squishy. It's about a, I'd say it's a fingering weight. Um, and it was like seven and a half ounces of fiber and I got 540 yards spun up. But it's, the colors are around like a gray, purple, mauve, um, but I love how it feels. It's really nice. Another spinning project that I finally got done. It took forever. Literally. I was commissioned to hand process some, um, alpaca fleece for a friend of a friend and spin it into yarn for her. Hi Donna, if you're watching. Um, and I finished it. I know this doesn't look like a lot for one whole fleece. Um, I did have to skirt off quite a bit because there was a lot of debris in it, unfortunately. And also Donna liked, I asked her what kind of weight of yarn that she liked. And she said between worsted, Aran, and bulky weight is what she normally goes with. So that's what I spun and that takes more fiber. But I was able to get her two skeins of one's 300 yards and the other one is 328 yards of a Aran bulky weight. And it's soft um, and squishy. I spun up this alpaca's name is Henry, which is kind of ironic because my oldest son's name is Henry and labor of love. That's what it is. Uh, I, the coloring of this alpaca there, I think it's an Appaloosa, which is kind of a multicolored brown, um, white mixture of their fibers. So I took most of the white and the mix of brown and I carded all of that separately and then the rest was all just a, a very light brown. Not quite fawn but a light brown. And I carded that separately to ply with the lighter um, mixture of white and brown. And I got this. So it's a very nice barber pulled effect. And um, I really like how it turned out. I had to wash it a lot. The fiber was pretty dirty, but it's, it's really nice um, how it turned out. I don't think I'll be doing something like this again, unless it's a coated animal where there's not like a bunch of hay or debris or anything in the fiber, especially with the tools that I have is not prepared for fully skirting and picking out hay and washing. 
and all of that. But I got some really nice skeins that I will be sending to her. I'm sure she'll love them. Also, earlier this week, I did some solar dyeing um, in some mason jars because in San Jose, it's just been absolutely disgustingly hot. And I wish that I had the opportunity. I was going to wear some of my knitwear for this episode and could not because it was still really hot. I only just turned off the air conditioner because of the noise. Not that it's cool enough now because it's quite warm still, but so I did solar dyeing because why not use the power of the sun to dye some yarn? Um, and so I put layered some bear skeins with dye and then I filled it up with water and acid and I got these. I don't know what I want to call them because they, these two are significantly different because they were at the bottom and then these ones were at the top of each mason jar. And this one looks significantly different than this one. So I don't know if maybe I'll sell it as a set and someone could fade it like, uh, like this, I think. Um, and I might call it solar powered. I don't know. We'll see. Uh, but I am excited to try something like that again, because that was a lot of fun. And super easy. You literally just put it in the sun for several hours and you take it back and you check to see if the water is clear. And it was when I checked. All right, so that's all my FOs for now. I didn't do a whole, I did a lot of knitting, I'd have to say, but I didn't finish any of my knitting. So first up on my works in progress, uh, you guys saw I had just cast on this last episode and I've just kind of been obsessed with knitting this because it's just been going super quick and I didn't think that it would go that quickly because it's a huge shawl. So this is a gift for my best friend for her birthday that was um, in July towards the end of July. And I'm almost done with one side. So I have a few more garter rows on this edge. And then I will pick up the stitches, but I already have it on a cord and go out the other way in the same repeat And it went by super fast and I'm loving how it turned out and I'm excited to block it and see how drapey and nice it com comes out. Love it. Um, I'll go over the colorways again. I, this is all made from my own hand dyed yarn from Doodlebug Yarn Co or Doodlebug Yarn Shop on Etsy. The first color right here is B&B Sandwich for Brook and Bree Sandwich. The second colorway here is that one time at karaoke, I believe. And this blue one at the bottom here is just one of those days. I'm hoping to repeat these colorways and put them in my shop. I did mention last episode that I had finished labeling all of my yarn for my shop and I just needed to retake pictures. I haven't done that yet. I need to do that. Plan is I will do that tomorrow. All right, next work in project, actually work in progress. Actually, I just cast this on. I'm getting crazy. Like I don't cast on this many projects at once. I usually am very monogamous with my knitting, but I cast on another project. This is a Pip and Pin Mema. Yeah, I think it's Mema. 
a honeycomb brioche cardigan. And I'll put all the information and stuff in the down bar on where to find it and on Ravelry and stuff. This, so far, this pattern is pretty impressive. Um, I don't typically like doing cardigans because you have to purl a lot because it's worked flat. This one, because of the texture, they did a workaround where you hardly ever have to purl. And it's pretty impressive, I have to say. I also thought I found a mistake in the pattern. I did not. That's what you get for not reading a pattern with glasses. Uh, let me get it out here. Ooh, it's all tangled. Um, I'm really not that far because I'm alternating skeins, so it's a little funky. But I've started the yoke and it creates this little like honeycomb texture on the back. And then, am I holding it? Yeah, this is the right way. And then these are the shoulders and then the front two panels that have also have the honeycomb brioche pattern. Super fun to knit, but I, again, I've been super crazy about the shawl and finishing that. So I haven't really been knitting on that very much here and there. Uh, I have not worked on my completely hand spun, all made from Rockstar Alpaca fiber, um, Sunray by Jennifer Steingas uh, sweater. I'm sorry, mom. All I have to do is the sleeves, but The shawl, it's just, it's very addictive and it's not too repetitive to the point where it keeps me interested. I will get to it, I promise. I will probably finish, I'll probably finish this weekend. All right, plans for what is next uh, after I have finished these spinning projects. Oh, I almost forgot. I warped my loom. I have a 32 inch Ashford rigid head loom. And I warped my loom this past weekend. I, it's been kind of languishing for a while and I haven't warped it since I made this lovely fabric here. This is also all out of my own hand spun yarn. I am planning on making a wool skirt for my sister out of it. A year in the making. Still haven't done it yet. I'll get there. So I reworked my loom with kind of the leftovers of this and some other um, yarns. I'll put in a little video. Actually, I think I'm going to do a whole separate video of my process of warping the loom and what I do to get to where I am. Like the from start to finish, I think I want to do that. Which I've already filmed some of the aspects of doing that. But yes, that was a lot of fun. Uh, I'm still working on it. I'm almost done with it actually. It's right here, and so I'm looking at it. Um, I must say that I used to use the shuttles with like the hooks at the end and you wind your yarn on and all of that. I got boat shuttles with bobbins and life changing with weaving. It's so so much faster. I mean, besides winding the bobbins, but pff, mind blown. It's 
pretty awesome. I don't think I will ever go back to the regular stick shells. Um, plans for what's next on spinning. I have a few braids of fiber that I kind of want to go through as well as um, some singles that I still have on storage bobbins that I kind of want to get rid of too. So you guys will probably be seeing that next week. Shop updates. I will, fingers crossed, take pictures of all of my yarn that's in my shop right now, but is not like pretty pictures and with my label on it. And I will take pictures of all of my labeled yarn and colorways and update my shop with all of those so that I get more of like a cohesive feel for my shop. Anyway, this is a pretty short episode. I didn't want to go too long this time. I got some feedback from family. I know you guys watch because I asked you to and you're forced because you love me. But I also have some other podcasters watching, so hi. Um, yeah, I want to just thank everyone for stopping back by and I will probably do some spinning tutorials and maybe some weaving tutorials and do those little like short videos on top of my podcast to keep things fresh and keep content coming out and not put so much pressure on myself with spewing everything at once on my normal episodes. Yeah. Wow, this was really short. I recall talking for so much longer last time, which I did. Okay, well, thank you all again for stopping by, and I will see you in the next one. Bye! Bye.